Can I draw your attention, those of you, uh, unless I, lest I forget, that the second activity kicks off this week. I know that some people want to finish the first activity, but the second activity is on distributed collaboration and um, the distributed collaboration, in particular in the form of um, open um, citation or um, shared collaborative bibliographies, open reading lists, if you might, are one of the areas in which uh, open academic practice can make a huge difference to, uh, to people. And in a way, is how a lot of research groups are now working anyway. So um, maybe not open, 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 but certainly starting to share, 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 share. And the relationship between openness and sharing is an interesting one. Uh, Lou McGill has written about that on the JISC OER blog. Anyway, um, so moving right along, if there, if there aren't any further, are there any further questions and um, comments for Francis? I wanted to uh, now, if I pick up my highlighter pen, um, and I think we're sort of about here now. Um, we're in the second full week of First Steps into Learning and Teaching, and uh, people will maybe have noticed that there are several themes going on. There is the theme of openness and open academic practice, which is being addressed principally through the um, visiting speakers. So Francis raising questions of openness. Well, we had a brief introduction to open academic practice last week. Next week, at uh, between 3 and 5, British summertime, we have uh, Etienne and Beverly Wenger Trainer, Wenger Trainer, uh, talking about academic identity and how identity and, if you like, the theories around identity have a relationship to openness and open academic practice. I think uh, next week is going to be a very stimulating discussion. Um, Lucy, we'll go into teaching groups uh, in a minute, um, but don't worry about that for now. Uh, I'll post a link up uh, to uh, the rooms for teaching groups in uh, just shortly. Um, <laughs> identity is a big problem for Brits. Um, um, so yes, next week, um, identity and openness. The week after that, open educational resources uh, featuring Dave White. Uh, does anybody want me to turn my video on? I noticed that I haven't turned it on. If you want me to turn my video on, tick yes. If you don't care, tick a red cross and I'll save the bandwidth. Um, one, the, <laughs> the nays have it so far. <laughs> oh yes, okay, good. Um, so the first step, okay. Um, open education, open academic practice and open educational resources being addressed through the um, visiting speaker stream. Uh, the first steps curriculum being addressed through a series of online discussions um, in week zero we did supporting learning in week one. Uh, what did we do in week one? Reflective practice. In week two, this week, we're looking at teaching groups. And I wanted to just open up a little bit of a discussion about teaching groups. Next week, we do feedback. The week after that, we will be doing lecturing or teaching large groups. And we'll conclude the whole first steps curriculum element with a discussion on evaluation in which we will um, seek to have you also evaluate this experience that you've been a part of. Um, weaving through the first steps curriculum and the uh, open, uh, open academic practice are three activities. The first one was a piece of reflective writing, which most of you are in the process with or have just finished. And this week, we pick up with the distributed collaborate, collaborative uh, bibliography, a key element of open academic practice. And 
the last two weeks of the course, the activity, and this is really the key activity, the last two weeks of the course will focus on you preparing a small piece of online teaching, perhaps a design, perhaps a video of you in action uh, to present to the group. So the first activity going over the first week and a half the second activity really done quickly in the next five days in order to clear the decks for the last two weeks of this course where we'd like you to focus on the preparation of a piece of teaching, what we might call micro-teaching online. So hopefully um, things are starting to become clear. Uh, that although there are lots and lots of threads and conversations going on, there is uh, an overall structure which is uh, maintained through the uh, WordPress and the Moodle, and I hope that that structure gives you something that you can um, hang on to as we go into this uh, increasingly open world. So the next little bit, I wanted to talk briefly about teaching groups or teaching small groups. And I do think that these open environments challenge the limits of internet-based tools for learning and teaching. There are things about being face-to-face -face that are crucially important. Um, so we're not face-to-face -face here, but I expect many of you do teach face-to-face. -face. So this course isn't only about learning to teach online or learning to be online in a personal learning network. It's about learning to teach in higher education where small groups, i.e. seminars and so on, are a very important dimension of learning and teaching practice. So the aim of this session is to support your teaching in small groups. And we'll just very briefly explore some strategies for for facilitating successful student group work. And we're going to do this through uh, using the uh, facilities in this online environment to break you into groups and ask you to do some um, uh, group work and then feedback to the plenary. So it's as Francis has been using the uh, site to solicit your comments, we're going to do it in a slightly different way. So we've been doing plenary work on the big screen. I'm going to break you out into small groups, ask you to have a small group discussion, and then the small group to feed back to the big room. So we're going from a large group use of um, feedback techniques to a sort of a snowball small group into big group activity. There's lots of different group teaching situations. They all have characteristics of sort of sense of group identity, some persistence. Um, so group activities and group, oops, come on, give me my highlighter pen. It's not giving me my highlighter pen. There we go. Group characteristics. So all groups have some sense of identity. They last for a certain period of time. They have various sizes, makeups, locations. And I'm not going to begin to break down a sort of a taxonomy of what groups might mean, but just to think that groups aren't any any one thing, but that have many different characteristics. And there's many different things that we can do with groups of different sizes. So there's going to be three, there's going to be movement now. I'm going to launch three breakout rooms. I'm going to cast you all into the breakout rooms. We're going to do this twice. Um, can I get a little smiley face from everybody who uh, has sort of loosely at the best grasped what I'm going to say? Yes, Aslan, well done. Kathy, good, good, good. Okay, we're going to, I'm going to cast you into breakout rooms, and we're going to do this twice. So you go into breakouts, you'll have a discussion, you'll return to the plenary, we'll have a plenary discussion, and then we'll repeat that. You'll only be in the breakout groups for about five minutes at the most. Um, so it's just a quick use, illustrating the use of the tool and the use of um, online group work techniques. 
So without further ado, I think I can now go to breakout rooms. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Next slide. First of all, let me give you your task first <laughs> before I cast you into breakout rooms and you say, what do I do? Uh, in your groups, please identify three benefits of learning in a small group. You might want to contrast this with learning independently and lecturing, and you might want to then share your ideas within the small group. I'll leave you in the small groups for about three or four minutes, and then I'll bring you all back to the plenary. I hope that's okay. So. Um, moderators, can you please note these tasks? Please identify three benefits of learning in a small group. You'll be in randomly allocated groups. I won't have anything to do with who's in which group. I'm simply going to use the tool to go to breakout rooms, create breakout rooms. I'm going to create three breakout rooms. I'm going to distribute participants evenly. I'm going to include moderators in the distribution, and I'm going to click on the Create button now. So fingers crossed. Good luck. See you all soon. Woof. Welcome all back. So, George, like, hello. Can I can I ask a question, Jenny? Here. Yeah, hi, is Jenny. It, is it possible when uh, Lucy has asked when she starts to speak, will she be able to see the slide that we created in the room? Um, the short answer is is let me see if I might be able to grab a screenshot of it. Just a minute. Let me okay. just see if I can do that. Sylvia is Sylvia is the. Uh, mistress of these sort of technologies. Maybe if Sylvia feeds back first, we will have the opportunity. So if we go room three, room two, one, room one, we may, by the end of it, we may have learned how to do it properly. Um, Sylvia, are you happy to go first? I can try here. Um, I, was, uh, I took a screenshot of each um, whiteboard that we were working on. But also, um, I did have a chance for the first whiteboard to right click and copy it. So let me just see if I can create a new whiteboard page and paste it here. Probably not. I don't know what I've just pasted. It's not very pretty. <laughs> oh well, it was a good try. Um, but in any case, so what I did was I took a screenshot quickly of the um, whiteboards so that I'd have something to um, look at. Let me just find it here. Too many windows open. Okay, so um, so I'll just um, review a few of the things that we talked about. If that's, if that's okay, there's there's a lot on the whiteboard page, and I'll actually probably the easiest way is to share this afterwards so that so that you can see everything that we gathered. Um, so essentially, um, sorry, I'm just fumbling here, I'm trying to find it again. Um, okay. Um, basically, a lot of um, things are posted around the sharing of information and getting a sense of community um, when we work together and develop understanding. And of course, there's the diversity of, of um, perspectives and so on. Um, I think I think the the fact that you can in a smaller group you can actually create something together. You can um, uh, actually come uh, you know with an outcome uh, is is much easier when you're in a smaller group. And and it's more about um, you know in contrasting with lecturing. It's more about uh, listening. Um, uh, and thinking about your contribution at the same time uh, when you're working in a small group because you are expected to give back. Um, so it's a little bit different from sitting in a lecture where you're not necessarily in your mind thinking, okay, what am, how am I going to now, um, how am I now going to contribute back to this discussion? It's very passive that way. Um, so in a nutshell, that's that's what we talked about. And what I'll do is uh, try to find a way to to share this screenshot. Is that okay? That's brilliant. 
Um, if I move on to the, uh, if I go to the next page, which I think is also a blank page, I think, uh, whoops, whoops, <laughs> things keep coming and going. Um, I want to uh, put a file onto uh, an image onto this page, and I think I can do that. Um, Um, I think I can do it like this. Ah. Um, Lucy, do you see that? Hi, George. I don't see it at the moment. Yes, I do see it. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Would, would people like me to feedback now? Would people like me to feedback now? Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me. Yeah? Fantastic. Okay. Well, um, there are quite a number of thoughts from our group. Um, some of the main thoughts were the fact that in a smaller group you can nurture the learners. Learners will feel more confident to ask questions. There um, can be more support for learners because um, you know there's a smaller number, there's less of a crowd, so people aren't going to be kind of lost in the crowd students more comfortable to participate, some very interesting points about deepening thinking, reflection, um, when the task specifically calls for both urgent thinking before coming to listing out ideas and agreements, dissent can be listed so it can be talked about. In small groups, students can learn, take on range communication group interaction roles, test and get feedback on modes of interaction and learn how to interact cross-culturally. Um, individual learning gains an audience and within the group likely also provokes insights that spark next adventures in independent learning. So I think overall the um, sentiment was that the small group is less intimidating all around and there are lots of opportunities for um, learners to really flourish within the small group. Okay, uh, I hope everyone could hear that. Excellent, thank you Lucy. Um, I'll mention briefly some of the, the sort of the disbenefits of it, but I noticed the little picture in the middle where there's something that's able to respond meaningfully to what's been said, unlike the MOOC, <laughs> where um, you do you begin to push up against the limits of the possible. Um, room one, three, two, one. That would be Marion's room, I think. Marion, do you uh, have a picture or anything that? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, uh, Anna took a screenshot. And in fact, when Sylvia was talking about her room, the screenshot was of my room. Well, that's what I thought, so I was a bit confused. But <laughs> it was indeed. <laughs> uh, do you want us to go back to that page? Yeah, I think so. But Cathy was, had volunteered to feedback. Ah, uh, hello. Is that better? Um, aha. Kathy has no microphone. Ben, have, ben, have you figured out how to turn on your microphone? Uh, Ben's not figured out how to turn on his microphone. Marion, can you step into the breach?
or Ben, if you see the screen, I'm going to just go and uh, draw a blob on the screen here. Um, there's a talk button right there. Click on the talk button, your microphone should work. Or Marion? Hmm, no talk button on your screen. Interesting. Um, can I hear a, uh, can I just see smiley faces from anybody? Can you hear me speaking? Juanita says yes. Ellen says yes. Jenny says okay, good. All right. Uh, I was just a, a little bit afraid that perhaps the sound had gone for everybody. I'm going to, with permission, move on for a second because I think we we don't want to belabor this too much. There are a number of advantages of working in groups, um, including many of these things that have been uh, identified in the in the small group discussion. Different perspectives come out, more involvement, opportunities for more people to get more involved. So if we brought this down to maybe five or six groups with three or four or five people in them, you might have had less opportunity to, to hide. Major benefit of group teaching is that students are required to be proactive. As David Jake says, should give students a chance to monitor their own, um, their own work. Optimum size for groups, Lucy, is really one of those um, uh, piece of string. Um, nothing about creativity? That's a biggie for me. Yes, they can be creative in small groups and perhaps even more creative than in large groups. Um, it depends, Lucy, on the task that you want to perform. So in some contexts, maybe 20 could be a small group. In other contexts, maybe four or five. Um, group teaching can prepare students for collaborative working in their future, involving and engaging students to solve problems can be more efficient than lectures. Sometimes you could just turn in a lecture and say, speak to the person next to you, answer this question. Students can take risks. Shy students get more involved. Students get immediate peer and tutor feedback. And there's a leveling of relationships. And this is something that's not always um, uh, it's not culturally uniform, let's put it that way. There are some teachers that don't like giving up the kind of control they have to give up to have small groups function effectively. And there are learners who don't want to uh, give up the, um, the hierarchical dependency relationship. And I don't say that that's not a pejorative. That's uh, just uh, the way that some learning relationships are. There are, other, there are many advantages to group work. But there are also disadvantages. Um, and as we've seen, there's been some distraction from the task. Uh, the, the environment can sidetrack the students, lecture insecurity, lack of guidance on group work, and so on. And the first one, this, uh, the issue of uh, what gets called free riding sometimes, um, is a real uh, problem in in group work. Some students uh, seem to be unengaged, and others seem to do all the work. Can lead to disharmony and problems. Tutors can fall back on their reserved positions of authority, expert, and prime talker. So there are lots of uh, challenges to group work, but one of the, um, if you like, the top level messages that I'd like to leave you with is that there is a very strong correlation reported by Chickering and Ganson that group work is, group work correlates with improved learner performance. Where by per improved learner performance, we mean those traditional proxies, that is higher exam results and fewer dropouts. Group work does work in terms of getting better results from students. However, there is another strong correlation, another positive, if you like, correlation, that is group work corresponds positively with negative student satisfaction. They're banging on the 
building site out here. <laughs> ah! So, um, good for uh, correlates positively with good student learning outcomes, but it also corresponds positively with poor satisfaction scores. And the challenge to us as teachers becomes um, managing those two correlations. There are more potential problems. And I was going to have a second breakout group, but we clearly don't have time to do it again. Um, but you've gotten the idea that you can use these um, online tools to set up and run small groups as we have more, as we gain more experience of using these environments, then we can be more effective in using them. I'm going to have to step out and uh, shut the window in just a second. So I would have asked you to identify group success factors. We're not going to have a chance to, feed, uh, to break out and feedback, but you got the idea of how you can use virtual environments to set up groups use groups to work in, come back to the plenary. And the typical kinds of uh, feedback that you get from uh, group success factors is this idea of shared purpose. We might use breakout rooms for micro-teaching. Yeah, need to try the rooms. Um, all right, I'm going to ask everybody now we can come back with one more discussion on the, on the plenary boards. Um, that's it for the presentation. That's all I wanted to cover. There's a lot more in the um, discussions in Moodle, um, uh, group work, um, teaching groups, um, material appearing every day in the wiki and on the forums. And so if we can say, I'll say thank you to everybody else. Does anybody have any um, comments on group work that they want to either pick up the mic or add to the, add to the whiteboard? Raise your hand if you would like to speak. Um, Go ahead, whoever. Eleni, yes. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, oh, I can right. hear you perfectly. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask if, do we need to be moderators in order to uh, break out um, groups? Yes, you need to be moderators to, to establish groups. But once you've established a group, you can set the rules for that group and you can allow people either to move themselves or you can um, uh, move, you, as the moderator, you can force them to move like I did. So what you could do is set up three rooms with three different topics and allow people to put themselves in the... Uh, yes, you could set up rooms with different topics and you can then allow people to go and choose which room they would be in, for example. Thank you, George. You're welcome. Um, so what I'd like to do now is I'm just I'm just getting a a link here to the I'm going to paste the link to the assessment cohort room into the chat. This didn't work last week, so there may be, uh, it, it may be flaky this week too. I hope it isn't. Sylvia assures us that, it, that it's uh, sorted out. Um, so if you see I've posted a link to the um, assessment room. Don't click on that link just yet. What you should do is either right-click and copy it, um, or you can find the link um, in the Moodle if you go there. But um, in just a minute, can I, in, first of all, thank you all very much for participating in this discussion.
Uh, Lizette needs to go supervision at 5. See you next week. I'll try the blog site. Cheers, Lizette. Um, so if everybody, before you ch sign out, please be sure to click on Quit Blackboard Collaborate, because if you don't quit Blackboard Collaborate, the recording keeps on rolling. Sylvia, I think you can uh, probably turn off the recording now.